Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. And new this noon, a shooting has turned into an investigation into a death on the east side. Police say someone shot 30-year-old Robert Reyes Rincon outside a home last night around 11 o'clock. At the time, he was talking to someone in a vehicle. Officers tell us someone in that car shot the victim. Reyes Rincon later died at an area hospital. They were saved by the smell. A local family says the odor of smoke and a popping noise is what alerted them to a fire overnight. It ended up destroying their home and did some serious damage to the home next door. As our Katrina Weber shows, it has also left one man in need of medical help. San Antonio firefighters tried their best to quench the flames that already had damaged one home beyond repair. The fire also spread to the house next door in the 2900 block of Tampico, sending families in both scrambling to safety. One woman says she woke up around 2 this morning to a popping noise, then noticed her power go out. Soon after, she and her family smelled smoke, then escaped from their burning home. Her husband suffered burns and was taken to a hospital. At her neighbor's house next door, four people made it out safely, but their pet parrot died from the smoke. The fire also caused heavy damage to their home. Fire investigators are still looking for the official cause of this fire, but the woman who lives here told us she suspects it may have started with a heat lamp that they were using in the backyard to keep the dog warm. Both families were left out in the cold. The American Red Cross showed up a few hours later to offer some help. Still, when it came to a long-term solution, neither family had any idea where they might end up. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Everyone available to escape a massive fire overnight in the Alamo Ranch area. It happened around midnight in the 5800 block of Sweetwater Way. When firefighters got there, they found flames shooting through the roof of a two-story home. The family of six, including four dogs, all got out. No injuries were reported. The American Red Cross will assist them for now as well. So far, no official word on the cause. Outside with live cam, we are enjoying some of the perfect days of February you could ever ask for. Just absolutely gorgeous. It's uh, so very true. I mean, yesterday was hard to beat. Today's going to be pretty close. It depends on what you like. Yesterday was a little cooler. Today we're going to get about 10 degrees when it comes to that afternoon high. So we'll be up close to 80 today after starting off pretty chilly this morning. We were down to 43 here in San Antonio, 37 in Kerrville. No freezing numbers here in South Texas, uh, but it was cold. It was jacket weather for a time. And uh, now we're seeing those temperatures really rebound. 41 in Carrizo Springs this morning. It was 45 in Kennedy, but most of us now sitting in the 60s, if not the 70s. Mostly clear. We've got 67 degrees at the airport, 70 in New Braunfels, 68 to gain 70 in both Bernie and Kerrville. And you look at the wind, it's uh, out of the southwest, anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. Generally a warming wind for us. Uh, so we'll continue to see some warm temperatures going into the afternoon. Forecast today, 74 at 2 o'clock, 76 at 3 p.m. We'll top out somewhere around 77, 70 at 7 p.m., 67 at 8 o'clock. Not as cold tonight. Uh, we'll see some moisture pouring in, and that means more fog tomorrow. Actually, quite a bit more fog than what we saw this morning. More clouds, too, and that may keep temperatures down just a little bit tomorrow, but a lot of heat, uh, especially as we get into Thursday. We're going to talk more about that forecast for you here in just a couple minutes. Look forward to that. Thank you, Justin. Not the video that you'll want to see go viral. If you're from Incarnate Word or AM Commerce, you can see pushing and shoving and even flying fists. This is a post game brawl after the men's basketball game at the UIW gym last night. It started while the players were going through the handshake line after AM Commerce had just defeated UIW 76 72. You can see players throwing punches. The melee spilled out onto the court. More players got into the action while other players, coaches, and trainers tried to get things under control. There were several skirmishes around the court. You can even hear the announcers say that they saw a young girl get hit and a staff member of one of the, of one of the teams had blood on his face. Still waiting to find out if there were any more injuries. We have statements from the schools and the conference. UIW Athletics and a and Commerce released this following statement. UIW and Texas A&M University Commerce apologize for the behavior exhibited by our respective men's basketball programs following the game on Monday night. The unsportsmanlike conduct that occurred after the game does not reflect the values of the universities involved, as well as the Southland Conference and their member institutions. The matter is currently being reviewed collectively by the conference office and both institutions as the safety of our student athlete staff and fans is our primary concern. 
The Southland Conference also released a statement. The Southland Conference is aware of the end of game situation that occurred between Texas A&M University of Commerce and the University of Incarnate Word men's basketball teams tonight. We will be working closely with both universities to review the footage and issue appropriate disciplinary action. Unsportsmanlike behavior is unacceptable in the Southland Conference and the safety of our student athletes, coaches, spectators and officials remains a top priority. A candidate for state district judge listed herself as gathering signatures to get on the ballot, even on days she was on a cruise along the West Coast. Anna Laura's Ramirez's application, which contained as many as 99 signatures gathered while she was out of state, drew a formal protest from one of her opponents in the March primary for 73rd District Court. The case that tracked down one of the voters who signed Ramirez's campaign petition. She now says the candidate should drop out of the race. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it it's, doesn't bode well for um, her to stay on the ticket and then you know, for her to want to. Coming up tonight at six o'clock, we'll hear from the Bear County Democratic Party, how they respond when Ramirez's opponent lodged her complaint. And still coming up in this half hour, Victor Whitman Yama leaving a lasting impression on some fellow players after All-Star Weekend. We'll hear from him about that coming up. Here are some disturbing numbers for you. More than 13 percent or 280,000 people here in Bear County have diabetes. And doctors are noticing something. More people with the illness are getting amputations. So they spoke with KSAT about things people with diabetes or pre-diabetes can do to keep their limbs. Of course, diet and exercise are key, but there are more things you can do. Tonight, our Stefania Jimenez will tell you about those things and a program that's helping men with diabetes in Bear County stay healthy. And it uses car analogies to explain diabetes care and maintenance. So you're going to learn more about the Diabetes Garage and how you can get involved. It's tonight on the Night Beats. All right, here's something pretty impressive. The YMCA's Enhanced Early Learning Center. We got to check it out yesterday during an open house. It's on the south side on West South Cross Boulevard, not far from I-35. A lot of unique features in the new space, all with the goal of caring for infants, toddlers, and preschoolers as they learn and grow. We're really excited. We've had the opportunity to use our, our funds to renovate our space. So we've been able to renovate it. We have um, uh, a guest come, Dr. Sandra Duncan, and really help us design and create our environment. And as you'll notice in this room, that though kids love colors, we went more natural and natural colors and bringing elements of colors. Pretty cool. The goal of the room is to create a calm, relaxing area for the kids to learn and grow. Because the kids today learning and growing will be the ones that take care of us when they grow up and we're old and gray. That's true. <laughs> we gotta keep, gotta get them early. <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah, that's uh, absolutely a fact. Hey, as we go outside for you right now, we've got some uh, clouds. It's uh, it's not a bad day. We are starting to see those temperatures warm up into the 60s and even 70s in some cases. Here's a concerning number. Uh, the aquifer is uh, dropping quite a bit. It's down almost a foot today at 642.8. We're starting to move into pumping season, so some rain would be good. Uh, in your pollen count, molds, ash, and mulberry are all low. We'll take a look at that forecast and see if there's any rain there coming up. Want to talk about the big time winner in San Antonio? Remember a big sweet stakes launched in a Super Bowl commercial? Only had one lucky winner, and that person is right here in the Alamo City. You might remember DoorDash had an ad with a really long sweepstakes code. DoorDash announced that Jonathan H. from San Antonio is the winner of DoorDash All the Ads contest. Out of the millions of people who participated in the sweepstakes, Jonathan was the only one who got the super long code correct. He won several prizes. How about a BMW i5 M60, a 2024 Toyota Tacoma, a Google Pixel 8 phone, and a Kawasaki off-road vehicle. That's just some of the prizes he won. <laughs> he got a lot more as well. That's incredible. That's just a haul right there, isn't it? 
for yeah, getting one code right. I, I I don't remember that commercial, but uh, I don't, undoubtedly it was quite a feat. Uh, whatever whatever he did, should have been paying closer attention. <laughs> it's because we always pay close attention to the question of the day. Yes, we do. This this is a good one. I'm glad you're paying okay. attention. Yes. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Mike. All right, we're Go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, it's National Comfy Day, okay? So we I just like know. the name of the day, too. Yeah, Comfy, yes. I thought you said coffee at first this morning. I was like, oh, every day for me. But that is one of the options, okay? So we want to know what, if you could only pick one. Yeah, yes. one. Which one. one are you guys going for? Yeah, on that National list right there. Comfy Day. Pillow, blanket, fuzzy socks, rope pajamas, t-shirt sweats, or coffee tea. What would you guys pick? Huh. I'm going with the t-shirts and sweats. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a good choice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you can probably take my man card after this one, but I'm going to say blanket <laughs> uh, because I'm always cold and I like just a good hearty blanket. Okay, go. this is the man that never wears a coat though on really? the coldest oh. days and then complains that it's cold. So, <laughs> what about yeah. you, Mike? Um, I'm going to lean toward the the old uh, sweats and, and t-shirts. Yeah, that, yeah, that's comfy too. I, I'm so, a blanket. Yeah. Speaking comfy. of comfy, I know we talk about comfort food. Yes. Wait to see the stuffed baked potato. Ooh. The chef described it as the size of a small football. How much does it weigh? Four pounds? Yeah, about Five four pounds. pounds. And what it is stuffed with. Mm -hmm. Give you a hint. Ooh. Barbecue. Yep. And it has oh, a fun name, yeah. too. It has a fun name. Four different <laughs> kinds of barbecue. All, All right. Need. Well, you guys can scan that code, and we will see which one comes out on yep. top for Comfy Day. Thank you, guys. Right here at Comfortable <laughs> Historic Market Square. <laughs> barbecue. I wonder if it's pulled pork kind of barbecue. And I wonder if oh, it just like imagine. smothers the potato. You can't even see the potato. Or brisket. Get some brisket. Yeah, brisket. Ooh, Football God. size. Come on. Be a good day to eat it outside. Uh, would be. You yeah. Want, you want to go check out sites? No, I'm not. You keep running me out there to check them. <laughs> I'm sure there's someone eating. Area. There's uh, you nobody out outside. there. Uh, yes, it is gorgeous today. And uh, it, we first have to talk about kind of the, the negative here. And as we look back at the month of February, it's actually been above average. This probably comes as no surprise to you. Uh, we're about 2.3 degrees above average. We've had a couple days here where we've been below, but for the most part, it's been warm. And as we finish out the month, it's looking very warm. Uh, so I think we're going to finish out the month uh, with uh, above average temperatures. And by the way, I know it's, there's only 29 days in February, so just ignore that. <laughs> I got to get my calendar straight here. Uh, in February, as far as rainfall goes, you know, we started off the month pretty well. Uh, we had some good days, uh, but then we've kind of hit a dry spell here, and it also looks like we're going to end the month on a dry spell. So not great news. And as we look at the reservoirs, they're still not in great shape. Uh, Amistad, 25%. Medina is still at 3.2%. It's been kind of stuck there, but it doesn't have much further to go. Choke Canyon's at 24%. Canyon, 61%. It's down 21 feet. It's been in a bad state really for the last year. So a month ago, it was at uh, about 60%. So it's down a little better within the month. But a year ago, we were at seven, almost 78%. So you can see how far it has fallen. Uh, some rain would be nice, but it is not in the forecast today. We've got blue skies, uh, just a few clouds. 67 at the airport, 70 in New Braunfels, 68 to gain, 70 in Bernie and Kerrville, and a southerly wind right now, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's where I think we end up this afternoon. Upper 70s, Canyon Lake, New Braunfels, Pleasanton 80, Pearsall 79, 83 in Creosaw Springs. It'll be a, a warm afternoon, but it gets even warmer next couple of days. Maybe not so much tomorrow, but Thursday. There will be widespread 80s on this map, so it'll feel a lot like spring uh, coming up by the end of the uh, work week, or at least on Thursday. Satellite picture shows uh, we've got perfectly clear skies. We did have some low clouds that tried to develop a little bit earlier this morning. In fact, some patchy fog that has since gone away. Uh, so there's just not much to look at here on the visible satellite picture. But I want to show you the larger scope here across the country. And you'll notice that it's still very busy in places like Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Heavy rain there, snow in the higher elevations. The ski resorts out west have been doing great this year with all these storm systems that have been moving in. But in this case, this storm system, unlike the last few, which moved into Texas, is not going to move in our direction. We have a ridge, a heat high, down across Mexico, and it's kind of shifting everything north at this point and away from Texas. So that keeps the rain out of the forecast for us. Uh, this little system will help to push a front through, but you'll hardly notice it. It'll just uh, turn the winds around to the north and west, dry us out a little bit, but it does not really cool us down. And behind that, there's not much there to bring rain into the pictures. So that's why this seven day forecast is 
rain free 76 Wednesday 84 Thursday. That's the warm day I mentioned some places could be pushing into the upper 80s 75 Friday it does cool down some some nice mornings comfortable afternoons into the weekend 76 Saturday 77 Sunday and maybe maybe as we get into next week a small rain chance by Tuesday. We'll be right back. And not only did Spurs rookie Victor Wimbanyama have a blast at the NBA All-Star Weekend in Indianapolis, he also left an impression on a lot of people. He played in the Rising Stars Challenge Friday night and the Skills Challenge Saturday before returning to San Antonio. 20-time NBA All-Star LeBron James says the sky's the limit for this young guy. He has one of the greatest coaches in, in, in basketball history and Coach Pop, so he's going to learn the game and learn it the right way. Just by being around Pop. I mean, Pop is one of my favorite guys. So, uh, but the kid is special and he's going to continue to get better and better. Um, you know, if he's doing this at, what is he, 19 right now? Um, he's just imagine what he's going to look like at 21, 22. And like, you know, so a uh, special kid. That's pretty impressive coming from him. LeBron James is 39. He has been the face of the NBA throughout his career. That is now in the wind down stage. There are guys like Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, who are also in their later years. So that means Wimby's time to fill those shoes is just around the corner. An era is definitely coming to an end, you know, with uh, all those great faces. I mean, I mean, we never know, you know, 10 years ago, we, I mean, seven years ago, we would, th we would think LeBron wouldn't be here for much longer, but turned out he's, he's still here. <laughs> and, uh, but so, you know, uh, of course, it, um, there's a new wave of guys arriving, but I'm, I mean, I couldn't be more confident of, for the future of the league. Even if I was just a, a fan, you know, to see so, many, so much talent in every team, every, in both conferences, you know, it's just, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. The game is in good hands. All right, it is All-Star Weekend. You know the rumors are going to fly. The Spurs are one of the teams talked about. They have been mentioned making a trade deal for the Hawks guard Trey Young during All-Star Media Day Saturday. Young was asked, what type of player should the Spurs be looking for to pair with Wimby? Hmm, sounds like he might know the guy. Anybody, I mean, the kind of player that can help him win a championship. I mean, make, it, make his job easier for him. I mean, somebody who can just help him. So that's, that's the type of player he needs around him. In his game and his competitive level, I mean, he's a, I mean, he's a, a different, different breed. I mean, being able to be that tall and do a lot of different things is, is, is kind of crazy. So Maybe him. The Spurs have a lot of capital to make a trade, a player or two, and a whole lot of draft picks over the next several years. All right, staying on the court, women's college basketball, Sahara Jones and Texas A&M hosting number 13 LSU early first quarter. Jones from Veterans Memorial High School with the pump fake and knocks it down. Oh, yeah, got you. Then. Ah, look at that. Aggies up 4-2, but it was short-lived because the Tigers got things under control. After that, behind Anisha Morrow, down low, she scores, and the Tigers go on a 13-4 run. She had a game by 25. Tigers won at 81-58. Jones, who was a senior, scored 10 for the Aggies. More from another local hoopster, number 12, Virginia Tech, went on the road and won at Louisville, 86-70. First quarter, Carly Winzel drives baseline for the reverse layup. Third quarter, she does it again, another drive, gets two more. The Antonian Prep grad scored eight points, 21 minutes, helping the Hokies improve to 22 and four. And after a weekend of rain, the Rock, with the famous "Start Your Engines" at the Daytona 500 yesterday, lap 192, William Byron gets into Brad Kozlowski and spins him into Joey Logano. That started an 18-car mess. And bringing out a caution, you can't have Daytona without the big one. Lap 200 with William Byron in the lead. Ross Chastain is going to spin from second and collects Austin Cedric. Bringing out the caution and just after the leader took the white flag and the caution comes out. William Byron wins the Daytona 500 rain delay. They still covered up an effort to clean up the nation's drinking water. Washington will be pumping billions into communities across the country. Details on the plan changes. And a woman who makes a living doling out financial advice now sending out a warning after scammers conned her out of $50,000. Why she says the crooks were able to convince her to hand over the cash. And also coming up today, new at five, adding olive oil into your cooking is touted as an easy way to get on healthy path, but does it really have health benefits? 
And with so many different types to choose from, what should you look out for? Consumer Reports weighs in and reveals which ones rate the best. That's today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. We'll be right back. The Alabama Supreme Court ruled that frozen embryos are children. Now, doctors and legal experts warn this could have a dangerous implication for fertility treatments such as in vitro fertilization. The Alabama Supreme Court reversed a decision to dismiss a lawsuit in which a couple sued an Alabama fertility clinic and hospital for the wrongful death of their frozen embryos. A staff member dropped them on the floor and they were destroyed. The ruling means that the couple can sue for wrongful death. The issue is already on the radar of federal lawmakers. Two senators introduced the Access to Family Building Act. That's a bill that could proactively establish IVF and other fertility treatments as a right for patients and physicians. A spokesman for the Russian President Vladimir Putin is dismissing allegations that he had the country's opposition leader killed. It comes as Russian officials refuse to release Alexei Navalny's body to his family. His mother made a video appealing to Putin directly to release her son's body so she can bury him. All this comes as Russian forces launch a new offensive in southern Ukraine and are pushing towards another strategic city. Ukrainians are facing mounting casualties and its troops continue to struggle with ammunition shortages. They've been forced to ration artillery while U.S. funding for the war remains stalled in the GOP-controlled House. The White House says $5.8 billion will go to states, territories, and tribes to clean drinking water, improve wastewater and sanitation, replace lead pipes, and remove contaminants. The funding comes from the 2021 bipartisan legislation that designated $50 billion toward improving the country's water infrastructure. Throughout the country, there are more than 2.2 million miles of underground pipes that carry drinking water and more than 16,000 treatment plants that handle wastewater. But the system has been receiving poor grades for decades now. ADC man is a DC man is suing the Powerball. He says it's not honoring the jackpot he won last year. 60 year old John Creek says he is owed three hundred and forty million dollars after the incorrect winning Powerball numbers were posted on his website. In 2023, Cheeks bought the ticket on January 6th for the January 7th drawing. According to the lawsuit, the 60-year-old alleges by January 10th, the numbers on the website had changed. In a hearing last year, the website agency for the Powerball called the lawsuit an attempted scheme and a way to capitalize on an obvious error on the D.C. lottery website. No error here. This is absolutely gorgeous. We got this on the money right here. No question. You are spot on, my friend. It is beautiful out there. Live cam shows another beautiful picture today. We've had quite a stretch of good weather here. It has been so very comfortable outside. I do want to show you, though, what we saw this morning. If you were up early, you might have noticed some fog. Now, it was thickest to our south, so you got to go all the way down there to Mathis to see that kind of thick fog. But see how it's kind of uh, low to the ground there amongst the windmills. That's a really cool shot right as the sun is coming up. Well done. Well done, and uh, we'll see a little bit more of this, I think, coming up tomorrow. In fact, the fog will be a little more widespread on your Wednesday, and that includes here in San Antonio. Well, let's look at the numbers across the state. It's warm. Uh, San Angelo is already up to 78, 79 down there in Brownsville, 70 in Texarkana, 70 in Tyler. Bottom line, Texas is one of the warmer spots in the country today. Uh, you, you go up north and you find some much colder readings, but we're just, you know, again, uh, kind of stuck in this weather pattern where it's going to be warm for an extended amount of time. Our forecast today, 76 at 3 o'clock, 77 at 4 p.m., and uh, we'll drop down about 74 by 6 p.m., 70 at 7 p.m., and 67 at 8 o'clock. Really nice evening, and as I said, that fog comes back in here by tomorrow. What does the weekend look like? And uh, we'll take a look ahead to next week, too, where there is a very small glimmer of hope. More on that in just a bit. All right, we'll look forward to that. Thanks, Justin. Checking a bag on American Airlines, now more expensive than other major U.S. airlines. The first checked bag on most flights will now cost $40 for customers who don't prepay online and $35 for customers who do. Previously, the price was just $30 for both methods. American has also hiked the price of a second checked bag from $40 to $45. The changes are now in effect for future flights. American's biggest rivals, Delta and United, both charge $30 for the first bag, $40 for the second on similar routes. House leaders have launched a bipartisan task force on artificial intelligence. 
In a joint statement, Speaker Mike Johnson and Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries said the committee will explore how Congress can ensure Americans continue to lead the world in AI innovation. The group will also consider safeguards to protect the nation from current and emerging threats. The Democrats and Republicans have each appointed 12 members to that task force. A financial advice columnist fell for a scam. Now she's out 50 grand. ABC's Eva Pilgrim with how crooks tricked her and how you can protect yourself from similar schemes. It sounds even crazy to describe it. A warning from a journalist who covers personal finance. She lost $50,000 in an elaborate scam that all started with a phone call. It actually showed up as Amazon on my caller ID. She said that there had been some suspicious activity under my account. Charlotte Coles, the Cuts financial advice columnist, thought she had just learned she was the victim of identity fraud. The person she was speaking to transferring her to someone claiming to be an FTC investigator and later someone who said they were part of the CIA. He knew my social security number, the last four digits. He knew my birthday. He knew my address. He knew that I lived with my husband and son, and he told me that my identity had been stolen by a criminal organization. The person Coles thought was an investigator describing in detail 22 bank accounts, nine vehicles, four properties, money wired overseas, drugs and cash all linked to her name, telling her there was a warrant out for her arrest for cyber crimes, money laundering and drug trafficking. He told me that in order to avoid arrest, I would need to cooperate with their investigation. The thing that made me kept keep going was that they had so much information about my family and they made it very clear that my family was potentially in great danger. Their directions, don't tell anyone about the investigation, take out $50,000 cash and deliver it to a vehicle that would pull up to her home. As soon as they had the cash, Cole says the phone call turned and she knew she'd been scammed. Oh my God, what have I done? I can't believe this has happened. Coles is the growing face of who these scammers target, younger adults. According to a recent report from the FTC, 18 to 59 year olds are 34% more likely than older adults, those over 60, to lose money to fraud. The scammers have gotten much, much more believable over time. And watch out for this big red flag. There is no way that a, um, a, a member of law enforcement is going to legitimately be asking you to forward them money in any manner. Who? That was ABC's Eva Pilgrim reporting. Now, if you end up in a situation like this and you think you're getting scammed, here's a couple more tips for you. Ask the caller's name, their supervisor's name, and what branch of bank or government agency they work for. Then call that branch using a number you know is legitimate to verify everything the caller has told you. Because sometimes even the caller ID on the phone will say the call is coming from a legitimate place. San Antonio quickly becoming a standard stop for big name artists when they're on tour. Another big star coming to the Alamo City. Details in a few minutes. Then a very up close and personal view of a total solar eclipse. How you can possibly get the best seat in the country. Justin showed this to you earlier on the radar. A powerful storm in California bringing potentially life-threatening flooding and mudslides. ABC's Matt Gutman with a look at that destruction that's left behind. Much of California under flood alerts as another atmospheric river pummels the state. In Santa Barbara, authorities reporting a fatality after a woman's body was reportedly found in Mission Creek Monday. Officials urging residents to exercise caution. We ask you all in Santa Barbara, please stay away from the creeks. They are absolutely dangerous. The city's airport closing after flooding caused operations to halt. And across the Golden State, roads disappearing under rising floodwaters. Yes. How do we get to our home? On the Palos Verdes Peninsula near Los Angeles, heavy rains eroding the ground beneath this house, its walls cracking and windows shattering right in front of Nikki Newsham's home. You have water pipes that break, and then they add more to the misery, and then it becomes this vicious cycle. 
Many residents afraid of how their homes might be affected. The houses around UCLA, like going to like the downhill towards, you can see like mudslides. Luckily, our house, you know, it's fine. And in Santa Rosa, this resident recalling the moment a tree crashed into his apartment. All of a sudden, it felt like an earthquake hit my house, but from above, thought that the tree had gone entirely through the uh, wall of my house. That branch impaling his roof and wall, luckily, he was able to walk away uninjured. You can see the entire thing it stretches the whole way. Got a feel for him. That was ABC's Matt Gutman reporting. A Delta flight this spring will give people an up close and personal view of a total solar eclipse. Delta Airlines is offering a special flight from Austin to Detroit, Michigan on April 8th. The plane's going to have extra large windows. The flight is timed for the best chance of safely viewing the solar eclipse at its peak, spending as much time as possible directly inside that path of totality. The airline says it has five additional routes on the same day. It'll also serve up good chances to see the eclipse in the air. The one they're talking about, I couldn't find it. I saw it this morning. They had yeah. like one flight left, couldn't find it. But I know other airlines are doing the same thing. I think Southwest is doing. I think I, mean, I saw Southwest has some. It's taking yeah, off journey in sure. at least. Uh, sure. It would be a very cool view. I would imagine the tickets are very expensive. Uh, yeah, they're not cheap. Uh -uh. And speaking <laughs> of flights, did you hear about the, the, uh, air, the flights that were going 800 miles an hour yesterday? ground speed uh, because of the jet stream across the country just pushing these uh, flights to go very, very fast. 67 so far today, 43 the low this morning. The records are 97 and 26, set back in 86 and 2021. We've got some warm weather, not record setting, but warm weather on the way. We'll take a look coming up. All right, you can add another big name to the list. Grammy Award winning artist Peso Plumo is going to perform in San Antonio this summer. Going to do a show at the Frost Bank Center in July. Tickets on sale in just a few days. We've got that info on KSED.com. Just scan the QR code there at the bottom of your screen and take a look at those details. We have fast become the artist want to go that place capital of Texas, maybe, you. or at least the country. So that's Hart. Yeah. We say Hart, J Lo, yeah, Billy Joel, Sting, yep, Stevie Nicks, Stevie Nicks, Tim Justin Timberlake, Justin Timberlake, uh, J Lo. Mm -hmm. I got JLo. We oh, can say JLo lo twice if oh, you sorry. like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Might as well. Uh, yeah. We had with Pink last year and yeah. Elton John last year. Man, we've become a big time. Yeah. I like that. There's a lot of big names coming. Uh, yeah. And they like the weather we have. They do. They do. Uh, why else would you be here? How, I mean, how can Come you on. not? Uh, this, is, this is why we live here in exactly. February. Uh, it's also why we're so very lucky uh, to be just 48 days away from the total solar eclipse because that path, as we've been saying, is going to cross over northwest San Antonio and the hill country April 8th. That's the day. Here's your eclipse fact for the day. Everyone in the United States will at least see a partial eclipse, but it's only a small area that sees the total solar eclipse and gets totality, and that includes us. So we're the big winners here. Now, I will tell you, yes, everyone will see a partial solar eclipse, but being on the path is so much better. Uh, it's so much cooler. Uh, so yes, uh, we're excited about this. We're going to keep counting down and bringing you a fact every day until we get there. And uh, hopefully the weather uh, will be good for us on April 8th. Uh, we know that tomorrow morning we'll be dealing with some fog. This is the f uh, Futurecast fog here, one of our computer models around 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, this morning the fog got to about southeast San Antonio and pretty much stopped. Tomorrow, it uh, moves further inland and most of the hill country along I-35, I think we'll see a pretty good opportunity and some fog uh, that will reduce visibility for a time. So that could affect the morning commute. Now, it does go away pretty quick, uh, but clouds may stick around a while longer tomorrow. And then on Thursday, we may do it all again. Now, I don't think the fog will be as widespread Thursday, but possibility we could get a little more in the forecast before uh, we see things clear out on Thursday. Obviously, no wind chill right now because it is warm. 67. Uh, wind is variable at 7 miles per hour, and it is just a really nice day out there. Uh, here is the big picture, and it's remarkably quiet for February. As you look across uh, Texas and really the eastern half of the country, there is just not much going on at all. So all the focus has been on California, where it has been so very busy. Rain, mudslides, snow, you name it, uh, they're getting all of it. Uh, you know, California went from being in a serious, serious drought to now almost being completely out of drought, uh, thanks to this sort of El Nino-like pattern. And you can see the rain stretches from Seattle all the way down to San Diego today. Uh, that low 
does try to move inland, but because we have a bit of a ridge over South Texas, it kind of moves up and over us and weakens and we just don't see the benefits from it. Unfortunately, it does push a weak front through on Thursday, but it just dries us out. So you'll just notice slower humidity and that's about it because temperatures are still going to be plenty warm. All the cold stuff's going to be up here across the Great Lakes and uh, north of us. And that really is the case. If you look down the line, pretty much going into March now, as we get into March, hopefully things will get a little more active for us. But in the meantime, it's uh, pretty much quiet weather. Uh, the dew point trend, so the dew points will climb tomorrow, and that's one of the reasons we have fog in a forecast, and then it drops off Thursday with that front. We get pretty dry air Friday, Saturday before dew points start to build again on Sunday. So 76 tomorrow, 84 Thursday. That is by far our warmest day. 75 Friday, 76 Saturday, 77 on Sunday. Warm weekend. Good week for the rodeo if that's in your plans. Uh, but this is uh, feeling pretty spring-like. Yeah, the rodeo ends this weekend. Look at those temperatures. Just a few people are going to be out there. Yeah. This rodeo remembers, powered by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. In the Old West, the Cowboys had more than just a few things to worry about on one of those long cattle drives. The most feared and deadliest, the stampede. At this time, Texas cattle were not fully domesticated. They literally had a wild side and they could spook easily. These half wild cattle were the Longhorns, brought to Texas by the Spanish back in the late 1500s. They had roamed free for centuries in South Texas. So when they were rounded up for a cattle drive, they could be trouble, especially during a storm. This best of mutton busted, powered by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. How many people can say they actually built an airplane while they were in high school? Not one of those paper planes to fly across the classroom. No, no. So this is what is exactly being celebrated here. This is the first student built aircraft in South Texas. It was manufactured by all those young minds over at Southwest High School. Our crews caught up with some of those behind the Dragon One at Stinson Municipal Airport. I'm just so excited. I hope you are too. I am Alana Medina. I am a junior at Southwest High School. I'm one of the students who is currently enrolled in the aviation class who has also helped build this plane. We had about five or six mentors. Hi, I'm Darren Medlin and I'm the volunteer mentor coordinator for the Southwest High School Aviation Program. Now starting back in 2018, the superintendent had a vision for the school to build an airplane. They had already started introducing aviation into the middle school and elementary school levels, and this was the capstone program. Heart was racing, heart was pounding, just so many emotions. Like, I, I don't know what to say. It's amazing. There's this, the amount of people that are here to see it is awesome. And he's right there, too. Like, I, it's awesome. It's amazing. It's not just for show. It's a real career-enhancing activity. How impressive was that? That is absolutely awesome. Congratulations to those youngsters over there at Southwest. They do a lot of great work in a lot of these high schools, teaching these kids skills so when they graduate, they're ready to go. Speaking of ready to go, yeah. they're always yes. ready to go right there, these two. Okay, <laughs> mm -hmm. look at this. That is a baked potato. No I mean, way. look at this. Look at the size <laughs> of that thing. It's like the size of a small football. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. No. Yes, we have Ron Patterson with Goshen Barbecue back with us again. The first time you were here, everybody was so happy because of oh, the Oh, that turkey, I still can taste it. Amazing. What, right. what do we got going here? Yes. So today we're going to construct our heavy Chevy Ultimate Texas Edition potato. So Mike, yes, slice that in half. Okay. We're gonna butterfly that open and then grab your fork. And so this process we call meeting the potato. That way when you get that bite, the potatoes are already ready oh, for yeah. you to eat. Oh, the little wow. things in life, right? Yes. A yes. Yes. potato this good. size, uh, how long, how much longer do you have to cook it and what so temperature? That that potato that size is gonna cook it for about an hour and a half at 450 degrees. 
And I'll tell you, this thing is just good. And then these are all the toppings we're going to be putting on there. The list is. I'm so, missing, so we Mike. have uh -huh. we have smoked <laughs> turkey legs to my our far right. Um, then you have pulled pork, chopped brisket, and you're going to top it off with some sausage. Okay, I'm oh very my. right now. Okay. And Jen is going to eat the whole thing within <laughs> what, the hour. What? Okay, we're. <laughs> <laughs> there, right? Okay, yes. Speaking of good food, we're also chatting with Ma Alice Harper today about how she's serving up not just great Cajun food, but also inspiration. Yes, we chat with her about her latest things. Oh, more food, yes. Ooh, and there's yes. a new spot you have to try, Ike Chula, and they are serving up. Look at that burger. There's hot Cheetos in that, Mike. Ooh, yes. I, I like those and waffle fries, drinks, too. Okay, I can't wait to dig in this mm -hmm. video. That whole lot more coming up on SA Live. <laughs> Stick around.